The first one is, is a group called uh, what, what we call dendrites. It's, it's how alloy metals uh, solidify, but it, it, uh, it shows up in snowflakes, it shows up in the frost on the windshield, uh, on um, patterns that occur on f new galvanized uh, iron pails. Uh, it's, it's just a very common phenomenon. The other one is, is segregation, where th like things clump together. And this uh, occurred very importantly in metals. It's what makes them strong and hard. But it um, it also occurred in the early universe. Once the un after the Big Bang, uh, once things began to cool down enough that gravity began to t be more important than the random motion due to the high temperature, um, the early universe began to clump up, and we still see this structure. Uh, it is applied widely to play to things like um, population dynamics. Uh, where you get uh, segregation in cities, where people move in the direction of where they're more comfortable, where their neighbors are like them. Uh, and it, um, it leads to, to very interesting patterns, geometric patterns, and, and how they develop in time and when they develop. Uh, so that's a whole thing. Then another topic is really a study of surfaces near a critical point, where the surfaces become very broad and diffuse. And this has led to an amazing uh, insight into the, uh, to, to the spreading of liquids, which is a, a thing that we call wetting over surfaces, where we can get uh, a liquid to spread over a surface without detergent. And this is coming into use now uh, in the use of carbon dioxide at high pressure, at uh, uh, where the, the liquid carbon dioxide has a very, very low surface tension and spreads and can be used for dry cleaning without the use of very poisonous uh, chemicals like carbon tetrachloride that have been used in the past. My, my father had been a young lawyer and, uh, and he had taken cases, uh, he had brought suit against the Nazis before they were in power because they were really street gangs that were doing outrageous things. And uh, as soon as they take, took power, uh, he took the trolley car from his home to his office and was met by a fellow lawyer at the, at the streetcar stop and said, don't go to your office, the SS is waiting for you. So we fled right away and we were lucky because people who fled in 1933 had a much better chance of surviving than those who waited until later. I, early in my career, I'd become aware of the fact that the theory of diffusion was inadequate. Uh, in diffusion, you have a mathematical equation that describes how density of a particular material smooths out. If you have uh, concentrations where the where, where the matter is more dense and places where it's less dense, that the matter diffuses from the regions of high density to low density, and the end result is that everything in time becomes quite uniform. But there were situations in which matter was attracted to the regions where the density of that particular component was higher, so that uh, diffusion, instead of going from regions of high density to low density, went the other way. And the mathematical equation for that 
the, the diffusion equation for, the, for that situation had no solution. And yet I felt it was a, a very common thing. It was certainly something that we saw in metals. And um, the, uh, the discovery that I made was a modification to the diffusion equation, which is now known as the kahn hilliard equation, which deals with this problem. And it, uh, it, it deals with the case where material uh, diffuses spontaneously from low density to nearby regions of high density. Uh, there had been a mathematics of diffusion, and this is for the problem of, let's say, put a drop of milk in water, and it gradually spreads out, and, and in time it becomes quite uniform. There were opposite phenomena where instead of the spreading out, which is part of this phenomenon, you have a clumping together, like, like if the milk curdles, if there was uh, acid in there. And the equations of diffusion for this particular situation gave no solution. Uh, they are to a layman. They are they they are indeed very simple, um, but they hadn't been studied. They they are what the mathematicians call nonlinear fourth order partial differential equations, and each of these words nonlinear, partial, and um, uh, fourth order. Uh, were part of their charm for the mathematicians. Here was an equation. Of, they had not studied many equations of this type, and they knew very little about what uh, would ha uh, what interesting things would happen with them. And this, the equation that I wrote down, is the simplest of those kinds of equations that you could possibly write down, and yet it has proved the subject of 50 theses and PhD theses in mathematics alone. It's, uh, it, it's a fascinating equation to mathematicians. Well, uh, I, I, you know, having been the father of this equation, it, it really is very similar to being a father because it has a life of its own. And uh, I long ago lost the ability or to, to keep guiding it. it. It's just going and it's, I'm very proud of it. But uh, it, uh, it, it's on its own. Uh, this, this equation that I wrote down it was amazingly simple. I, I had difficulty solving it. I'm not a mathematician. Uh, I knew th that it would explain what the phenomenon in metallurgy that I was looking for, uh, but it turned out to be a an extremely rich equation. There were a large number of phenomena that could be explained by it. There were also a large number of different properties that ma quite general properties that mathemat mathematicians could work uh, on uh, and have been working for decades now and what they tell me they will ha they still have several decades to go oh, I think forever I mean as long as as long as there's mathematics it, it's uh, uh, there are there are standard equations that keep coming up, uh, and this is going to be one of them. It's a little bit more complicated. But you know, let me give you an example. Uh, price times the number of things you buy is equal to the cost. The same equation is the rate at which you travel times the number of uh, the time that you travel is the distance covered. So uh, Ohm's law is, 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 a, is a simple. Mathematically, they're all the same. You multiply two things together to get something else. Uh, and 
so so this equation is 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 at its deepest level is is a very simple generic e e equation for for phenomena that occur all, all the time and uh, so i think this equation will join those equations which uh, kids will learn in their physics classes or in their economics classes or in their sociology classes uh, and uh, as we learn more about its properties and and how they're solved and of course the computer will will give you numerical solutions quite easily uh, it it will persist it, it's not something that will disappear